people themselves were very happy to see that and, that's, and the funding agency. So uh, just let me sh conclude with a few words on the Xenon One Ton. I told you a little bit about it. It's, a, it's been a very fast development. This was 2013 in Old B, which I mentioned there was nothing. And a couple of years later, that's what you see. If you were to visit the underground laboratory in Italy, and I welcome you to visit anytime. Just email me if you pass by Italy and you want to have a special visit, I will arrange it. You will see this structure. It's a beautiful building. Uh, it's the detector is inside this water shield. I will tell you a little bit about it, which is, as the name says, is shielding it from the radiation. It's a large 10 meter diameter, 10 meter tall tank filled with very pure water implemented or uh, implemented with photomultiplier as well. And uh, the detector is inside this 700 cubic meter of water for shielding and next to it there is the so-called infrastructure building. And you see that this building is a three-story high building, again about 10 meters tall. And the reason that it's like this is not that we didn't have money to put doors and walls. I had this vision to make it transparent, like the Apple stores on Fifth Avenue, because I wanted, I wanted people to see the beautiful infrastructures that we built. All these systems that we built, most of them with our own hands, are really piece of art that I think everybody should see. So we have a lot of visits underground. Normal, normal meaning, normal. Good people like you who come to visit. And usually you see a box closed and sometimes you cannot enter. And so what do you see here? You just not even have to open the door. People can actually witness what we have as systems which are needed for xenon one ton. Because this experiment is quite complex and it's a lot of infrastructure for cooling the xenon, for taking the data with electronics and DAQ in the middle floor. And we have two beautiful pieces of equipment which are custom made on the ground floor. One is a big sphere, about two meter diameter, which can hold all this 7,000 kilogram actually of xenon and keep it cold. It's a special sphere that we built Again, Colombia was responsible mostly. Uh, and next to it, there is a five meter tall distillation column. We do our own cryogenic distillation to clean the xenon, although it's very clean, to further clean it from radioactivity. There is a tiny amount of krypton in xenon as you, when you bite, and we want to remove this tiny radioactivity of krypton 85, which is in the xenon. The detector itself, and so on and so forth. So many infrastructure. This is a picture of the interior of the water shield, as we say, with this photo tube, with this reflective foil. Um, this is the actual cryostat Colombia was responsible for. So it's, a, it's again, is a very a beautiful piece of hardware that we had to deliver and the challenge was to find the very clean stainless steel that we built this du dual um, double vessel um, vacuum insulated cryostat. This is how it looks like, that's the final product. It gives you an idea of the size of this cryostat, it's about 1.5 meter, um, the diameter of these flanges, so it's still tabletop, not so I can still hug it. In fact, there is a picture, and about 1.2 meter tall. So we're not talking of huge things. And it's connected to the outside wall. The challenge is that this guy is in the middle of this tank filled with water. The liquidified xenon that we produce in the top floor of that building has to be carried it's by gravity, is being fed through this cryogenic umbilical cord. It's like this baby has his umbilical cord through which the vital fluids go in and out because that's what we have to do. The reason we don't put the cryogenic system next to the detector because we want to keep the detector extremely clean and so we have to place it far away, not to mention it will be challenging to operate these refrigerators in water. So this is one of the challenge. This is some of our students, ourselves, as we mount the detector inside the water tank, as we say. Another picture with the outer vessel closed. This is to give you an idea of the size. This is me because I've been the technical coordinator of this experiment. So following very closely the construction of many of these systems, it gives you an idea of the bottom part of this outer vessel. 
it's like a nice bath and this is the size of the outer vest so this is one of our uh, great guy here at Colombia with me at the company in Italy putting the insulation and this is underground when the vessel is electropolished and cleaned and insulated how it looks like to give you an idea of the size inside that stainless steel cryster there is this beautiful detector which I don't have time to tell you a lot about it but you see a lot of copper you see a, this is a beautiful picture before we close it up early November before the inauguration and they see a lot of copper and a lot of white stuff which is Teflon reflectors and stainless steel and so on and so forth uh, no much time but anyway that's how it looks in the clean room before we have to move it underground and these are the eyes I mentioned photomultiplier special type of phototube three inch diameter a very nice work of art sorry I'm going fast that xenon is contained in this sphere that's early on March 2014 when we are building this sphere with another company